What's good everybody? Welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Yeah, it's been a little bit since we put a video out, but uh, there's some good reason for that. But first, let's talk about a couple things. Hmm, let's start with why did we move out into the country to begin with? Why not just live in the city like we used to? Or at least I did. Well, first things first, this is Courtney's childhood home. It's where she grew up. Her family has lived on this street since 1955. Her grandfather built a house on this road. Her father built a house on this road. And we've been building our lives here on this road. Robbie wants you to see the bullet in the wood in case you missed it. Bullets. Got it. I'll bet you that bullet's been here since 1955 too. So in a little bit, I'm gonna have Courtney come out and give you a small history lesson about Beagle Road. What is life on Beagle Road? Did you see that? That belongs on a farm. I believe that's called a combine. That was a combine. Combine. Was that on Beagle Road? That was on Beagle Road. That was a combine on Beagle Road. Yep, it was. Must be for on the other side. That side of the road. That side of the road. Not this side, that side. Not this side, that side. Not in front of me. Why you always gotta be in front of me? Look, measuring your ego. It's so big. Whatever. All right, come on, for real. Okay. Once upon a time, on Beagle Road. This story begins in 1955, or 56, I might have gotten corrected the other day. I don't know, approximately 60 years ago. 60 years. Whitey and Betty Caldwell build a house on Beagle Road. Whitey and Betty Caldwell bought some property and build a house on Beagle Road. That's a lot of alliteration. Betty built a house on Beagle Betty Road. Build a, Betty, Betty built a barn. Betty built a barn? No, she, I built a barn. You built a barn. I built a barn. We'll get to that. That comes 60 years later. 60 years? Jesus. 60 years! All right, let's go. Okay, Betty built on Beagle Road. Whitey and Betty had four children. Some of them moved to far sides of the country and some of them moved down the road. Right here, in fact, right here on the road. Their son, who moved down the road, is my father. And now we live here. Alan. Alan. Alan moved down the road. He just moved down the road. He bought property and built a home to make his own little homestead down the road on Beagle Road. That was 30 years ago. 30? 30. 30. 29 if we're being precise. Yeah, but round. And now we're here with this nugget and his two sisters. Here's my question. What was here 60 years ago? What was this? Colonel Stinson's farm. Related to Barney Stinson? Maybe. I hope that joke's not lost on everybody. So if you're counting, this is generation number four on Betty's Beagle Road. Generation three on this property alone. Yeah, wow. all live on the same road. Saying that we're raising the fourth generation of our family on the same road sounds a little nutty to many of my friends and co-workers. Just not, just wouldn't occur to them to do that. But to me, I don't know, it made sense. This is the life that we wanted, the same life that I grew up with, with animals and gardens and woods and a creek and still being really close to Target. I mean, I loved my childhood. Why wouldn't I want my kids to have the same life? Or at least their version of it. Four and a half years ago, we pulled the trigger and here we are. Chickens, goats, a garden I fail at regularly, but our happy little homestead. ago when we bought the goats, we looked at our township ordinances, figuring there was probably some limit to the number of animals that we could have. We didn't find anything, which made sense. Our neighbors have tons of horses. Other neighbors have horses, cows, sheep, 
growing up, we had chickens. The neighbors had goats. I mean, one of my friends who lived right next to the elementary school had a pig. His name was Wilbur. He walked in circles around the house. So I didn't think much of it and went on about my goat business. If you've been watching our channel, you all know the barn saga. You've probably watched the videos of all of the trials and tribulations of getting that barn right and ready to use. I guess I should have figured there was more coming. <laughs> I guess I should have figured that the flooding and the rain and the snow and everything else that kept us from using it wasn't going to be the only thing. Sorry. So start 60 years ago and then fast forward to Saturday. We checked the mail and we had a letter from the township. Apparently two things happened. Number one, our contractor never got a permit for the barn. Now, my bad for not seeing it. That's true. I accept responsibility for that. I will say I don't think I ever saw the permit for our shed or our home renovation either. Nonetheless, it is my responsibility that I didn't see that. What the letter also said is that we were in a residential area and we did not, by right, have the ability to use our land to raise animals. Yes, let me repeat that because I couldn't comprehend it the first time either. We do not by right have the ability to use our land to raise large pets or farm animals, including chickens and goats. Over here, that looks like corn, right? Probably a farm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it, but right around here, I think, I think that's also some corn. Hmm, I wonder. At current, I am standing on Beagle Road. And it pretty much looks the same on both sides. And right here is my mailbox. On Beagle Road, by this cornfield. If you walk about 800 feet straight back, roughly, you'll eventually get to the end of our property on Beagle Road. I live over there and not over here. Over here, I can farm. But over here, I cannot. Let's go over that again. No farm, no chickens, no goats. Yes farm, yes chickens, yes goats, no rules. Lots of rules, need special permission. Still, no chickens, no goats. My feelings about this have really run the gamut. Anger, fear, sadness, confusion, righteous indignation, but now I've set it on determination. Please don't take any of this as anger towards people who make or enforce the rules. Take this simply as I don't agree with the rules. Maybe this was a swift kick from the other side to tell me to get more involved in our local community. So there. I think I forgot to mention that somewhere between 60 years ago and 30 years ago, my grandfather also served as township supervisor. And my father helped to build the highway that runs past here and also helped to survey and plan the township golf course. A little bit of history for you there. Everyone likes a good history lesson, right?
We're falling like stars. This is Honey Rider. Hey. Say hi. Honey was born in February and she's, oh, I don't know, maybe 25 pounds. Yeah. She's a little bit slow growing, but honestly, she won't be much more than 40, maybe 50 pounds. Full grown. Right. But you're a good weed eating machine. Ooh. And a good snuggle buddy. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Who doesn't love goats? So where do we go from here? Bright and early Monday morning, we went to the township office with our application for a zoning hearing and our check for $500. Thanks to a lot of generous family and friends, we actually were able to cover the cost of that uh, through our GoFundMe page, which is amazing. Um, I am so amazed at all of the notes of support and donations and calls and texts and emails and Facebook messages in support of us. If any of you would like to show your support for this fight and overall support for this type of lifestyle, we will leave the link in the comments. We also will happily accept messages and comments of support too. Absolutely. They help just as much. The way we look at this is, uh, this is a fight for people who've made this kind of a choice for their life, and it's being threatened. Not just here, but all over the country. I mean, we've read article after article after article where people are just not able to do what it is that they need to do for themselves and their families. We actually heard of someone and then um, I got a message from this person within our same township that uh, was forced to get rid of her goats and chickens. Um, and it's a, it's a really unfortunate situation. situation. Like I said, this isn't about uh, the people who made or, in, or are enforcing the laws, but I think that they come from a place of not understanding. And just because something's always been that way doesn't mean that that's the best way to do it. One of those supportive messages put us in touch with an attorney and so we will have representation at the zoning hearing. As much as I tell Kenny I know everything, I don't actually. So this is the time to get some expert help. It's really buggy. What eats gnats and can I get them here? Are we zoned for whatever eats gnats? In the meantime, we are in compliance because we responded to the letter. I was a little concerned that the initial verbiage said that we had to cease and desist use of our property for this purpose, which would be a little difficult since the goats live here. So do the chickens. But got that cleared up. So that's the first step, right? It does kind of blow my mind that in a time when you can have chickens within city and town limits in most areas, particularly here, <laughs> that I would need special permission to have them on my five acres. Honestly, I was shocked. Shocked. There's another emotion I have felt throughout this. Keep watching, uh, we will go back to doing some fun, crazy stuff that we always do, because who doesn't love that, and who doesn't love laughing at us? Also, we are going to the Homesteaders of America conference next week. Had to plug that, because I don't know if it'll be plugged in the next video, since that's you destroying our living room. Uh, but if you are gonna be at the Homesteaders of America conference, we would love to say hello to you, say hi to us. Uh, we're both pretty introverted folks, so don't hate us if we're awkward about it. <laughs> I'll definitely be awkward. I mean, think about it. We make videos while we live on our property, and no one else is in them, except for us. Check out these videos down below if you like this, and you want to see more about what's going on. Otherwise, peace out.